Okay, I'm going to list the contents of this folder. Notice I've deleted everything from all the previous videos. We are starting out with a clean slate. We have main class dot cs and inside here I have me first module but in this case I'm actually going to turn around and say make this make this public make it visible outside of the assembly and then let's say C sharp compiler slash target module slash out me first module and I'm actually gonna say me first module class just to be explicit that this is a class and the module is going to be a module file so me first module dot net module and the input file will be main class.cs and I need to save it. I have the star there. Save it. The star goes away. Hit enter. List the contents of the directory. We now have me first module.net module. Hello from module one. Let's change this to a two. I'll change this to a second. Very similar to what we did before. However, I'm making all these public before they were not public. So me first module. This will be me second module. Same thing. And then this time, I'm actually going to go a little bit further. And we're going to make a me third module. And then hello from module three. Save that. Again, compile it. Me second module will now become me third module. Hit enter. List the contents of the directory. And we now have three .NET modules. Me first module, .NET module. Me second module, .NET module. Me third module net module. Uh, very cool. Let's let's bring this over here. I'm going to clear off the screen. I'm going to draw what I'm about to, to do. I want to make a few assemblies. I'm going to mean to make assembly A and I'm going to make assembly B. All right, we have modules 1, 2, and 3 like so. Let me just box these in. And what I want to do is assembly A will be made up of modules 1 and 2 and assembly B will be made up of modules 2 and 3. Okay, and the intersection here is module 2 and .NET modules are not bound to one assembly. They can be part of as many assemblies as they want to. Now again these modules, they're, they're I've never ever done this in, in professional industry, but, but working with these modules has helped me understand what an assembly is. Assemblies, we think of them as, as these single files, which 99% of the time they are. They're DLLs or the EXEs, but assembly is so much more. It's this logical grouping of, of uh, .NET types and that sort of thing. So we're going to logically group modules 1 and 2 into assembly A and modules 2 and 3 into assembly B. And what's even cooler is, again, I don't need another code file to do that. I can just make these assemblies up. So C sharp compiler slash target library, meaning it's going to be a DLL, meaning no entry point, meaning no main. Uh, that's, that's, what do we call it? We call it assembly A dot DLL. And then we need to add some modules, add modules. And what are the, me first module dot net module and I know I've been putting commas in here like this I'd say me second module but I think I believe the, it's flexible enough for me to say add module me second module dot net module that's probably a little bit more verbose than the first version but let's try it and voila let's list the contents of the directory and we now have assembly a dll which is made up uh, here's the DLL, and part of this assembly though is me first module and me second module, all right? And that's because we added those modules right here. Me first module, second module. All right, that's oh, I just cleared off my diagram. Ah, oh, oh well. All right, let's do the exact same thing. Target library assembly instead of assembly A though, I want to call it assembly B. B, and then we're going to say add. Uh, second module, I guess we did that down here, but just to be consistent, I'll say second module, and then I'll say this will be our third module, me third module, dot net module. Hit enter, and list the contents of the directory again, and assembly A and B, B uh, what makes up assembly B is second module and third module right here. So there you go. <coughs> abstract concepts. And we made it public this time, did we not? We made them public, public classes, so we can actually access this code across assembly boundaries. Let's 
let's do just that. I'm going to uh, comment this out though, just so I can look at it and reference it as I type here. Let's do class me main class and static void main and bring that up a little bit. Let's let's say me first module dot hello and me second module dot hello. Remember in the previous video we couldn't call these methods because we couldn't access these classes. The methods were public but the classes were not public. They were internal to the assemblies. Let's save that and see if we can get this to go. C sharp compiler slash reference. Let me get that out of the way. Uh, we're going to reference assembly A because we know assembly A has me first. Oh, we called them classes, didn't we? Class and class. I had this down here to reference it and then I didn't even, didn't even look. Let's save. Uh, reference assembly A dot DLL and the input file will be main class dot CS and I actually want to specify an out slash out uses assembly a dot exe and hit enter and it compiles just fine list the contents of the directory we have uses assembly a dot exe and we can even execute it hit enter and hello from module one hello from module two okay let's 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 use assembly b this time we're going to say let's, we can get rid of the first one and instead we can say me third down here and hopefully you can see this coming from a mile away we're going to use assembly b so use assembly b and reference assembly b hit enter and it compiles just fine list the contents of the directory uses assembly b.exe uses assembly b.exe and hello from module 2 and hello from module 3 so me second module is being shared between two assemblies, assembly A dot DLL and assembly B dot DLL. Yeah, but but again, assemblies are logical concepts, and 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 me second module can be a part of however many assemblies it wants to. And me second module likes to get around, you know. And anyway, let me let me see if I can just illustrate this one more time, hopefully with some colors that show up. Assembly A is made up of me first module and me second module. Assembly B, uh, well, Assembly A is also made up of Assembly A.dll, even though there's no code in here. It's purely metadata that says, hey, I have these two modules that are part of me. And then Assembly B is made up of me second module and me third module. And then Assembly uses Assembly A, uses Assembly A, uh, references Assembly A, and, and depends on the code inside of there, and uses Assembly B, references assembly b dot dll so yes uh, this is way more complex than it needs to be but i think it really drills home the fact that hey assemblies are logical concepts they're they're groupings of files now why would you ever want to do dot net modules and why did microsoft even include this feature well it kind of goes back to thinking about when dot net came out internet bandwidth was starting become starting to become a plenty but but it wasn't as plenty as it is now and and so if you wanted to download some code off the internet you're going to have your I'll show you in later videos that you can reference code and download code as needed over the internet and if you don't ever use that code why do you call it down but I think more importantly if you uh, have data inside your assemblies we can store files inside of assembly like uh, I don't know XML files or image files or any kind of file you want you can store inside of assembly and and if it's rarely used and you don't want to eat the download time on that then then stick it in a module and have it sit by itself anyway and also phone bandwidth is not as fast generally it's not as fast as your home bandwidth I mean I know cellular networks are getting a lot faster and, and my home internet is actually pretty pathetic so my cellular networks probably faster but if if I was on a slow cellular cellular network and I'm only I don't need all of the code from the assembly downloaded I only needed part of it and I'm on a Windows phone for the five people that own Windows phones then then you don't have to download all the code you can just use what you need and download as necessary 
However, again, these these .NET modules, Visual Studio does not support this natively. I have to do all this on the command line. So I think it was a good feature that they thought was good, or at least a feature they thought was good. I don't know if it was a good feature, but it definitely helps me explain, hey, assemblies are these logical concepts. And yes, they're generally single files, but in this case, it's not a single file. It's just a logical grouping of files.